Hello and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Express Check-In. Today I'm recapping the last Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast live show, episode 35, Breakout Con 2019. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. This episode was all about Breakout Con 2019, a great gaming convention the entire Bellhop team attended two weeks ago. Due to all three of us being at the con, we invited my wife, editor, and our chat room moderator, Deanna, to join us for the show. Now, similar to our interview with Tracy Barnett last week, this is another episode where I strongly suggest you check out the full show, either here on YouTube or on your favorite podcatcher. In it, all three of us talk about our breakout experience, and there's no way I can summarize all of that conversation here. Now, this was the second time Deanna and I have gone to breakout, and the first time for Sean. Now, Breakout 2018 was one of the best con experiences either of us had experienced. And after last year, we knew we had to go back this year. Breakout is not a big con, but it's growing. 2019 was only the fourth year of the con, and the second year at the Sheraton Centre in downtown Toronto. From what I understand, peak attendance was about 1,500 people. So this is no Gen Con or even an Origins. And that's something I love about Breakout. There's plenty of space, you're not bumping into other gamers, and there's plenty of time to actually hang out, catch up, and chat with friends, new and old. Now, it's the social interaction that really makes this con for me. To me, Breakout is all about the people. Breakout 2018 is where I first met the entire Gem crew. These awesome gamers from Buffalo and beyond. I met a ton of other gamers last year as well, and it was great to meet up and hang out with them again this year. Now, the other notable thing about Breakout is it is the most inclusive, welcoming, and safe con I have ever seen. Due to this, it's also the most diverse, with people in all shapes, all sizes, all colors, and all genders attending and gaming together. On the full podcast, the three of us break down the weekend day by day, starting with Thursday. Now, the con only runs Friday to Sunday, but Deanna and I headed up a day early. We took the train from Windsor and had another great experience with Via Rail Business Class. Now, once in Toronto, we checked into the Fairmont Royal York. After some wandering downtown, a failed visit to the rec room, uh, we decided to head to the Sheraton Center in hopes of running into other gamers who had come into town a day early. While hanging out the Sheraton lobby, Dan and I played our first game of the con. That was Keyforge. Now, eventually our plan worked out and we did run into some other gamers. We sat there chatting and our small group kept growing. Eventually, all of us headed to an expensive but good dinner at Quinn's. From there, we moved upstairs to base camp. Now, at base camp, we kept running into more and more people we knew. We hung out with a mix of old friends and new until almost two in the morning. I gotta say, it was a fantastic night, and at this point, I was already happy with my con experience. Now, Friday, Deanna went and checked out the Toronto Comic Con, while Sean and I headed to Breakout Con. I was shocked by how much bigger the con was this year in 2019. Now, this year, they had the entire second floor of the Sheraton Centre booked. Every room had something going on, and there are a lot of rooms on that second floor. Some highlights include the massive ballroom for board gaming, uh, with a huge gaming library on loan from Tabs, a local board gaming club. There was a family room filled with actually good kids games, most of which were play to win. There was an entire hall dedicated to Dungeons & Dragons Adventurers League. There was a miniature painting area, a room dedicated just to heavy games that was all 18xx on Friday. There was a LARP room, and going back to that safe space thing, something very important, there was even a quiet room. Now, Sean spent most of the day attending panels, most of which he noted were excellent and informative. You'll have to check out the full show for details on those and hear it from his own words. Now, I spent the day wandering, talking to people, checking out the vendors, of which there were significantly more than last year, which was good to see. I could actually buy dice this year. Now, eventually the two of us met up and we played some more Keyforge. Uh, this was Sean's first time playing his new decks, so that was cool. Uh, we played two games and split the win. After that, Sean headed back to some panels and I got to try out Planet. Now, this is a new one coming from Blue Orange Games that's going to be released on Earth Day. And I'm not going to get into details here. I just strongly recommend you check this game out. I was very impressed. 
Now, while we were doing the breakout thing, Deanna was at Comic-Con, feeling woefully underdressed by not being in costume. She had a ton of good things to say about something they have at the con called sketch panels. This seems to be something no fan should miss. I finished up Friday with my first RPG of the con, Sentinel Comics. This is a new RPG based on the Sentinels of the Multiverse card game. I had a fantastic experience playing this game under Eric Paquette, and it's now on my must-buy list when the full game is released. Now, Saturday, all three of us were at the con. This was my RPG day. I played in a great game of High Plains Samurai Legends run by the designer Todd Crapper. That was followed by a game of Tales from the Loop run by the wonderful Angela Murray. Now, Sean and Deanna hit up the board game room where they played Suburbia. Uh, after that game, Sean headed off to more panels. Deanna played some games with strangers, which included Dominion and Mintworks, both of which she had enjoyed playing. She also checked out the Bring and Buy auction, which is something even to this day I wish I had found the time to do, because it sounds like it was extremely impressive with a ton of great stuff, including a lot of sealed games and old AD&D modules and box sets. Now eventually we all met back up and headed out to dinner with another group of gamers and had some excellent pub food. And then back at the con, Deanna played Long Live the Queen. This is a new game from Phil Vecchione and Senda Leno that is still being playtested. Around the same time, I played in Chris Nizak's Dungeon World game and had an interesting experience burning pretty much everything. Uh, Deanna finished up before I did and managed to fit in a game of Castle of Mad King Ludwig before we called it a night. Now, Sunday was a much slower day. I played my first ever protocol RPG, uh, a game called Desperation of Atlantis, which was expertly, model mo uh, expertly moderated by Wen Rachel. Deanna played in her first game of 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons and noted that D&D was pretty much like riding a bike. No matter what edition, it still feels and plays like D&D, with rolling D20s and armor class into hit bonuses. Uh, most of the rest of the day was spent saying goodbye to people. It was a little bittersweet. We did intend attend one final panel on uh, that was on podcasting, the podcasting 101 panel before heading home to Windsor on the train. Overall, it was a fantastic con experience. The only reason Breakout Con 2018 is no longer the best con experience of my life is because Breakout 2019 topped it in many ways. Absolutely everything was either as good as last year or better. Now, I just want to finish off by saying if there is any way you can make it to Toronto at the end of March break next year, you owe it to yourself to make it to Breakout Con. Now, due to how, how much the three of us had to say about our experiences at Breakout, we ended up calling the show done once we finished that discussion. As it is, the episode is just a bit over two hours. So we never dove into our Gloomhaven update, a review I had scheduled to talk about for Race for the Galaxy, or our usual look back in our Tabletop Gaming Weekly segment. So next week, you're going to get a double dose of those things. We are here to answer your questions. Do you have a gaming or game night question you would like us to tackle in a future Ask the Bellhop segment? You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or you can head over to the website, tabletopbellhop.com, and click on Ask the Bellhop. Now remember, we record a new episode of Tabletop Bellhop Live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, and we would love it if you joined us in the lobby, our chat room. That's at twitch.tv forward slash tabletopbellhop. Now, if you've been enjoying the content we're providing, it would be fantastic if you would consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Express Check-In. You can always find us all across the web and social media as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, or drop by our website at tabletopbellhop.com for more gaming content. Be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking over here, and check out our latest video by clicking over here. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night, and game on.